Finally, let's talk about distributed computing. Uh, we uh, let's review what we discussed about current trends of data mod, uh, management. One is the first one is the new platform with open source RDBMS and the cloud computing infrastructure. Um, the second one we just discussed the NoSQL database, and we will talk about it later uh, in future sessions. Now let's come to uh, talk about uh, distributed computing, which is the in this case context is from Apache Hadoop and Spark. Um, so, regarding distributed computing, uh, distribution co computing is a design pattern where system components are located on different networked computers, which communicates and coordinates their actions by passing messages to one another from any system. Um, so, advantage of distributed computing is that it's elastic. Um, it is horizontally scalable. You can add nodes, reduce nodes, and uh, thus achieving a certain degree of uh, cost management and performance optimization. It also, it's fault tolerant in the sense that uh, any nodes uh, break down, you can replace it with new ones. Uh, currently, in data engineering world, the most important distributed system is the Apache Hadoop. Apache Hadoop is an open source software framework for storage and large scale processing of data sets on clusters of commodity hardware. I think the only word that uh, we didn't see before is commodity hardware, and which is uh, which means um, there's regular non dedicated hardware versus uh, when you buy uh, data processing uh, hard, uh, to, uh, hardware, high end hardware from like Teradata or Oracle, you will require to buy their own. Servers. These are specialized servers, specialized for uh, intensive data processing, and they definitely have better performance over regular co commodity hardware. But uh, they are also much expensive. So what uh, Hadoop here does is to put a redundancy into this uh, consideration. Um, it builds a cluster of many computers, many nodes, put in together, uh, linked by Hadoop software, and uh, utilizing all the nodes to calculate. Maybe each commodity uh, uh, node is not a, uh, performing as good as uh, specialized hardware. And uh, maybe when you're doing all these uh, coordinations, you are actually uh, having a 20% or 10% overhead in order to manage those co in the nodes. But uh, when you have enough commodity, you should achieve the same calculation power of specialized hardware. And by doing this, <coughs> if you, since you're using commodity hardware, hopefully you will achieve a, a better cost, uh, cost ratio. Um, there are three components in the Hadoop. Uh, three modules uh, underlying the core at the core is hard uh, hard to common it contains libraries and utilities needed by other Hadoop uh, modules, especially including those utilized for uh, uh, for distributed uh, calculation uh, distributed compute management. Then there's the Hadoop distributed file systems. It's a distributed file system that stores data on the commodity machines, providing very high aggregate bandwidth across the cluster. Then finally, there's how to MapReduce, a programming framework for large-scale data processing. Now here you can see that it's uh, the similar uh, paradigm of a computer system organization that we have been seeing in cloud computing. We have the Hadoop Common, which is the underlying infrastructure or software infrastructure, as well as the administrative tools. Then there is a Hadoop, Hadoop, uh, Hadoop distributed file system, which is a storage. And finally, there's Hadoop uh, MapReduce, which is compute. So we are back to the similar, familiar compute, storage, and administrative paradigm again. And uh, hopefully, uh, this, will, this is a common scene you will see in any computer system. Uh, we will talk about this in one of the last uh, 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 last class on how would you get used to uh, all these different systems because there are so many new technologies coming every day. If not every day, it's probably every month. Uh, when you see something new, how are you going to learn it? How are you going to uh, master it? How are you going to utilize that in your at work? 
fundamentally, any computer system will consist of these three components: administrative nodes or or software, and compute and storage. That's all you need to care. This is how you um, how you start to break up the technology stack into smaller pieces that you can understand or easier to understand. So here, HDFS is for data storage and the MapReduce is for compute. And remember, Hadoop is, uh, 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 Apache Hadoop is mostly for data engineering and data analysis. So that's why we put here MapReduce is for data analysis, which is a compute part of uh, Hadoop. Talking about HDFS, HDFS stores large files, typically in the range of gigabytes to terabytes, across multiple machines or nodes. It will split data into blocks. It will replicate the data blocks across multiple hosts. Detail is three, and two on the same rack, one on a different rack. Again, we are seeing similar uh, uh, similar organization patterns as we see in in the cloud computing world that we have. It's a uh, large files similar to cloud storage, and you will split that into blocks and replicate three. Uh, into three uh, copies, right? Even this the number three is similar in storage account. Then data nodes can talk to each other to rebalance data, to move copies around, and to keep the replication of data high, which is uh, something managed by automatically by HDFS and by uh, it can also be managed by cloud storage account. And the key here is, uh, in the future, you will see, oops, you will see that um, uh, HDFS actually is the, um, not exactly HDFS, but the, the organizational um, the design is what's behind the data lake hosted on Azure Data Storage. That's why there are so many, uh, because basically these are just uh, best practice when you have um, uh, cheap and available resources. That's how you would like to design system. So they learn from each other on how to design and uh, that's why their design looks more and more similar. Now coming to MapReduce. MapReduce is a processing technique and a program model for distributed computing. MapReduce consists of two important tasks, map and reduce. Reduce is always performed after map. Map takes a set of data and converts it into another set of data where individual elements are broken down into tuples. Then reduce takes the output from a map as input and combines those data tuples into smaller. So if you consider similarity to SQL, because uh, these two are the most important processing tools for the uh, of data analysis, SQL and Hadoop. Comparing to SQL, map is like select and the reduce is like group by. Map takes care of the data and convert it, doing calculations and on each individual level. Reduce aggregates data into a smaller level. For example, you, have, uh, you want to map item in A to times 2. Uh, like A equals 1, 2, 3, you want to convert to 2, 2, two, two, uh, two 4, 6. What are you going to do in a origin in a system like um what i'm going to do is you will do this distribute this into three different machines so originally if you do that in one machine you will pick pick one times two pick two times two pick three times two you do that in three steps and you will get the two three four two four six with within three uh, three blocks of time with this approach distributed approach you will do one times two in one machine, two times two in uh, one machine, three times two in one another machine, so that you are doing this processing in another machine, in all three machines, in one step. So instead of uh, getting one to one time two uh, to two to, uh, to three in three steps, in three time clock, you are doing this in one time clock. That's the power of the uh, distribution. Let's get uh, then. As for reduce, right? If we want to do a reduce, we want to aggregate, we want to sum them up. You want to do, use the item one plus item two. Then you can do one plus two, the result plus three, the result plus four, plus five, plus six. That will go to five steps. 
what you can do in the distributed environment is you will put or break this up into blocks. 1 plus 2, 3 plus 4, 5 plus 6, this can be done in one time. Instead of doing the one by one, you do it one by one time, then aggregate again, aggregate again. If you do this in a serial, in tandem, it will take you five clocks, but here it takes you three clocks if you do it distributedly or parallelly. So this is how distributed calcul uh, cal uh, calculation can reduce time. Both map and reduce can be distributed across multiple compute nodes. It makes it easier to scale data processing over multiple computing nodes. There might be, but of course, there might be data shuffling across uh, different nodes. So decomposing a data processing application into a mapper and a reducer is uh, sometimes non trivial Now it's, it's it, it, we just use the example of everybody times two or adding up together. But if there are like more complex operations, certainly it's uh, something that uh, requires some careful consideration and design. But the, the good news about it is the, the as soon as this process is defined, you can scale the application easily. You can, uh, because uh, the way you do this for 10 uh, nodes is the same that you do this for 100 nodes or 1000 nodes. So as long as you have, you can have a small data set passing, uh, verified and uh, confirmed, you can easily do this for a thousand, a much larger data set like a thousand nodes. So this is the HDFS and the MapReduce. Now HDFS stores everything in a hard disk and MapReduce theoretically go to files, uh, uh, file notes, uh, read files and do a batch processing. Apache Spark is one step ahead one step further ahead of this uh, uh, Hadoop uh, processing uh, architecture. It is based on Hadoop MapReduce. The main difference, the main feature of Spark is it's in-memory cluster computing. Instead of everything stored in the hard disk of uh, one of the commercial nodes, Spark has its uh, data directly in the machine's memory. So it's um, uh, exactly the same MapReduce process only that this time data is not stored in hard disk, it's in memory. That makes the processing much faster. It has the same uh, distributed calculation uh, map reduce process, right? So that will increase the processing speed of application. Spark extends this uh, map reduce model to efficiently use it for more types of computation, which include interactive query and stream processing, which is understandable because uh, what the Spark does is uh, putting everything in memory. That means it's faster, so you can do much more things. Then Spark has uh, different components, right? Under the under underneath the Spark Core, then you can use SQL, Spark SQL to uh, to to run against Spark Core. You can use streaming, uh, machine learning, and the graph, the graph processing. Um, Spark, when it saves data in memory, it saves data as a RDD or resilient distributed data set. It's a central unit of uh, the data in Apache Spark. It's a distributed collection of components across class nodes and can implement parallel operation. For it's essentially a data set. It's essentially a data set. It's a data set spread across multiple nodes. It's called resilient distributed data set because it's, uh, it has multiple copies across different nodes so that it's resilient and, it's, uh, and the data itself is spread out, right? So you have uh, one, two, three uh, spread out to multiple machines. Each one is in multiple machine. For, for the node one, it can be uh, have uh, three copies in three different machines. That's resilient. And um, for one, two, three, and any for node one, node two, uh, for, for for data one, data two, data three, each of them is in some of the machines. This is the distribution to the nature, and the, when they come together and form one data set, that's RDD resilient distributed data set. Um, then you will uh, Spark will uh, create a blueprint of uh, what should happen. So Spark, uh, one thing about Spark is that uh, when you define what to do with uh, the data, data set. Spark does not execute 
your command immediately. Rather, it's like a piece out, uh, a blueprint of what you need to do. So I, I, if I tell Spark to time two the, um, every data in this data set times two, then add a map and uh, the and the times three the, the result times three spark will not execute that immediately it's not going to like uh, get to the first uh, um, for, for, uh, get to the first requirement times two then okay i will go to time uh, time everything by two no uh, no not like that uh spark will uh, receive those const uh, commands accumulate them and form a, pr a blueprint to see what is uh, required to do and possibly doing some optimization on its own. Uh, this, uh, um, so this is called lazy evaluation. It's evaluating, it's not uh, executing. When it turns, uh, when, when you actually instruct it to perform action, that's when it starts to operate, uh, to work on all the steps in this blueprint. That's a late, execution so it's a lazy evaluation the late execution and turn the final result to drive drive a program that corresponds the, the, the set to the external data uh, data store so relation rdd is the object container it's a no sql object container it contain any data but it basically it's a key value pair it's a java collection right so it's a key value pair it can be uh, it's a collection so it can be anything uh, here is a key, a bunch of a key value pair. So it's very different from relational tables. It was uh, original, Spark was originally designed like this. It's one of the uh, NoSQL movements, right? The problem with this is that it's very hard for non-SQL, uh, for non-Java programs to understand, uh, or scalar programmers to understand and process this RDD. So later on, um, the Spark introduced the idea of a uh, data frame. Data frame is a uh, is a wrapper outside uh, outside of uh, RDD. It's a um, distributed collection of data organized into name the columns. And when you say name the columns, what do you think? That means the columns has a schema, right? It is conceptually equivalent to a table in a relational data database. Just that uh, the uh, the order of a column may still be flexible, but still it's uh, it's a schema. Um, it's a data set with some sort of a schema, and it's a relational schema because now that you said it's a name of columns, that means you have uh, the concept of row and the column. It's a two-dimensional relational table. Thus, data frame is easier to handle than RDD, especially with the introduction of sparse SQL. So it's a similar, as you can see, this is very similar to Pandas uh, data, frame, uh, frame, uh, data frame too, right? It has the same scalability as RDD because it's built on top of RDD. It's compatible with many big data processing technologies like Hadoop ecosystem and machine learning and artificial intelligence tools like uh, Panda, uh, Pan, uh, Python Panda. Um, in fact, Spark data frame at the very beginning of introduction is slightly different from Panda's data frame, but over the years, over the last few uh, uh, 10 years or so, these two has been like uh, communicating with each other and uh, gradually merging into each other. Now they are equivalent. Now, since data frame is relational, I would consider data frame is enhanced data table, enhanced relational table, just a relational table plus some attributes, plus some calculations and attributes. But we can treat this as a two dimensional table, no problem with that, and use SQL to query. It's called Spark SQL. So your Spark is widely used for ET um, oh, and the data analysis, especially with the introduction of Spark SQL that normal people, non-programmers can finally access Spark. Comparing this Spark to MapReduce, both of them are widely used for ETL and the data analysis. MapReduce is used for linear processing of huge data sets and uh, it's an economical solution, but uh, it can only run a batch uh, fashion. So if you don't need immediate results, MapReduce is the uh, low cost solution. For Spark, everything has to be in the memory, right? That makes it uh, more expensive because memory is generally more expensive than hard disk and uh, it can have a less volume than hard disk, but it definitely offers fast data processing. 
And data processing requires compute power, like graphic processing, machine learning, joining. This is ideal for Spark. It's actually when you see joining, you know there's uh, some kind of uh, SQL processing going on. So this is uh, what Spark is uh, good at, at fast processing, uh, fast and complex processing of uh, data sets.